In this video, I want to show Mac users how to find their Arduino port. These days, it's getting easier and easier. So what you want to do is maybe you just start with an Arduino object. Oh, first off in line one, I have this clear all. But I'm using the Arduino function. And as I put this in, it says, OK, look, here's how you use the command. There's, you specify the port and the board and then options. So there are a few different cases here that you can use. Um, they're all the same, looks like, to me. Um, let's just try it and let's see what happens. And I successfully specified my port. Um, I could also put in here Uno if I wanted to specify further which board I'm using, but it all automatically detected that it was an Uno, so that ought to be good. Now suppose that didn't work. I'm going to show you in the terminal how to find this. So in Mac, you have a terminal. So I'm going to hit terminal, uh, go to the hourglass or the looking glass here and search for terminal, click on it. It brought up this terminal and I'll bring it over here to the screen and just get rid of all that stuff there. But notice here, um, there's a the port name here has dev and cu and usb modem so on mac in terminal you have this ls command it's list the contents of the current directory so if i use pwd it tells me what the current directory is and it shows you my username uh, i start off with the root which is the forward slash and then users and then my username so that's my working directory but uh, the arduino is located uh, it's connected or its port is in dev. So if I do ls forward slash, you'll see all these different folders inside the root folder, which is forward slash. There's a dev folder. So let's do ls forward slash and then dev. And I can do tab completion and it'll finish it, dev, which is good. It saves me from having typos. So in here, I see all these um, different things. Uh, if I'm looking for something that begins with cu usb modem, I can look manually like this and scroll through or I can do this again ls and then put um, dev and then uh, cu dot usb and then I can hit star for uh, a wildcard character it looks for files beginning with that and ending in whatever and uh, there it is so you'll see that's the same port name that MATLAB found Another way to do it is to uh, use tab completion. So instead of the uh, star, I get this far and I hit tab, and it'll finish it for me if there is something that starts with the right thing, and then I do that. So then I can specify it here and then copy and paste it into MATLAB. Now, uh, you wouldn't want to do that every time, so uh, there are programmatic ways to do this in MATLAB if that still doesn't work for you. So like, um, so again, step one was to just let MATLAB automatically find and populate the port for you. The second way is to go into the terminal and find it. Here's a third way. You can do the ls command in MATLAB and you, I can put here dev cu usb star and it returns this. Um, and then uh, a completely equivalent way to do this is to put it in parentheses as an ls matlab command and uh, put that in quotes completely equivalent and I'll, I'll assign this to a variable just so you can see what's going on here and what you'll see is this returns with um, x is a character array as you can see here and there's a carriage return at the end, which is maybe it's subtle, but that's what that is. That's why there's a new line. So if I want the, the name for a port, I can do like this. So I'm taking everything except the last uh, character, which is the carriage return. And so you can see there that that's exactly what we want. No more, no less. So um, I'm going to combine that here so we'll, we'll also do, um, yeah, we'll change this 
and we'll say we'll make code to detect our Arduino port. So to do this, we'll use the ls command. Okay, so that ought to have the same effect. And that successfully connected me to my Arduino. All right, so in brief review, uh, we gave you three ways to find your Arduino port. So the first was to let MATLAB auto-detect it. The second is to manually find it in the terminal. And the third is to programmatically find it in MATLAB. So I would recommend trying one first, and if one doesn't work, then go to three because it's nicer than two. Hope that helps you Mac users. Have a great day.